What you may already know is that Google looks at a user's experience when they land on a website. And one of the metrics that they use to measure this is called Core Web Vitals. Now, I previously did a video all about what Core Web Vitals is, how to check if you actually pass, and what you might need to do to pass if you aren't already. But what you really need to know is that you do need to be able to pass Core Web Vitals not only for good user experience, but also for rankings. And in case you are not familiar with what Core Web Vitals is, Google says Core Web Vitals is a set of metrics that measure real world user experience for loading performance, interactivity, and visual stability on the page. They also say that this aligns with their core ranking system. So this is very important that you pay attention to. Google is transitioning to a new metric that they're going to be using to measure the responsiveness of websites. So it's a good idea to check now if your site is going to pass this new metric. So if it doesn't, you have time to work on it. Now this new metric is called Interaction to Next Paint or INP. And this is going to replace FID as a core web vital. So what exactly is INP? According to Google, INP is a metric that assesses a page's overall responsiveness to user interactions by observing the time that it takes for the page to respond to all click, tap, and keyboard interactions that occur throughout the lifespan of a user's visit to a page. So to simplify that, INP simply looks at how much time passes between a user interaction, like a click, and the next paint, being what visually updates on the website. So how long does the page take to load after that click? That is going to impact your INP value. Now they're going to pass or fail you based on your performance and they outline that on this table. As you can see here under INP, we have a good score, needs improvement, or poor. So you can see where in that range that you follow. So as you can see, according to Google, your score should be under 200 milliseconds. So first things first, let's go ahead and check to see if your site actually has an issue, if it's going to pass INP, and then we'll look to see what you need to do if it's not gonna pass. Now you may have received an email from Google Search Console letting you know that you have an INP issue. And if you don't have Google Search Console set up, this is one of the big reasons why you want to have this set up so you can be notified if there's any potential issues with your website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to our Google Search Console dashboard. From there, we are going to go into the Core Web Vitals report and we are specifically going to open the report for mobile. And there we'll see if we are being alerted to an INP issue or not. Now keep in mind, this report is here to help prepare you for this ahead of time because INP is not officially part of Core Web Vitals until March of 2024. But if you're seeing issues, it's a good idea to go ahead and take care of them now. So a couple of ways that you can use this is you can use the Debug Bear website and use their website speed tool. And this is gonna let you put in your website and it's going to show you a specific Core Web Vitals report where you'll be able to see how well you are performing with the different metrics in Core Web Vitals. You'll also be able to use Google's own tool, PageSpeed Insights, and that is going to give you a mobile score. Some of the most common fixes needed are reducing the page size and limiting the page resources. So if you're not up to speed on how to fix page speed issues, your best bet is to use a tool like Google PageSpeed Insights. And the reason is because not only is it going to give you a score, but it's also going to give you a list of reasons as to specifically why your score is what it is. And if it has issues, it is going to prioritize those issues and showing you which issues have the biggest impact on your score. So it will help you determine which items you need to take care of first. Now, if you don't want to read all about fast load times, this is something good to pass off to a web developer. Often that is going to be significantly faster for you just to have someone else do it who is up to speed on exactly how to make your website load faster than it is for you to learn all of these different techniques and how to make this happen. So do know that you have time. This isn't fully going to be implemented into Core Web Vitals until March of 2024. However, this still impacts your mobile page speed, which is a ranking factor. So I highly recommend that if you're seeing an issue to go ahead and take care of it now so you don't lose out on any rankings or traffic that you could otherwise get now. 
So definitely take just a minute, jump into your Google Search Console, see if this issue is already being reported there in your dashboard, and run your website through some page speed tools to see how you are scoring. I will list a couple of the free options down below where this will give you a lot of good information on how your website is performing. If you want to stay up to date on more Google changes, as well as tips and tutorials to help your website grow, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for spending your time with me, and I'll catch you next time.